Hey everyone, Daniel from Video Game Book Club here. A while back, I reviewed two games that my mom loves, and that I used to tell her were bad because I like to annoy her. Those were Bust a Move and IQ. Now, IQ turns out to be a really, really good game. Bust a Move, still kind of bad. Today, I'm going to go over another game that my mother loved, and that I used to tell her was bad just because... Pac-Man World for the PS1. Let's go take some pills, which is probably a bad joke to make with the opioid crisis. See ya! Pac-Man World was released in 1999 in celebration of Pac-Man's 20th anniversary. We of course now are nearing the 40th anniversary in a couple of years, and the polygons on the PS1 show their age. While enemies' environments don't hold up very well, I can't say the same for Pac-Man. He's just a happy-go-lucky yellow ball with horrifying arms and legs. The music will wiggle its way into your ear and not let go. Actually, while I was writing this, I had the same Pac-Man World song in my head the whole time. For all of it. It won't stop. Please. Please make it stop. Level design is intricate enough to require some backtracking if you want to collect everything, which you will if you want to get 100% completion percentage, but linear enough to where you can go through without having to, except for one big issue. At the beginning of the game, Pac-Man's friends and family are kidnapped by the antagonist, and you will find one per world. You must first find a key, then free your friend in every world before you can fight the final boss. While unlocking the 3D takes on traditional Pac-Man mazes, and getting as much fruit as possible isn't required, this is one collectible that will halt your progress. I actually missed two friends and had to go back and find their keys after I beat all the levels before I could fight the big bad. There are some nice effects that you'll see throughout your journey, from Pac-Man throwing dots to the visual effect that plays out on certain words and titles, Pac-Man World is still a visually enjoyable game, even with its polygonal jaggedness. You'll play through several worlds, including a hot vacation spot with pirates, a sci-fi themed area with spaceships as your level portals, a rundown and failing factory, thanks Obama, a carnival, and lastly, a spooky haunted mansion, which makes sense since Pac-Man's main antagonists have always been, and always will be, his drug dependency. I mean, his ghost. The ghost. You'll guide Pac-Man through 3D levels that still rely on more traditional 2D design with a little extra depth and a camera that doesn't necessarily hate you, but definitely makes some of the platforming harder than it needs to be. Levels don't overstay their welcome and I had a ton of fun with the little exploration the game allows. Being able to predict and anticipate where a secret would materialize shortly after I activated a switch became a fun and rewarding experience. Pac-Man has a wide array of moves that is disposable. A butt bounce, which makes a incredibly satisfying noise. He can throw dots that he collects in mazes and in the levels. And he also has a run move that is very reminiscent of Sonic. See kids, even Pac-Man gotta go fast. You'll use these moves to destroy skeletons, alien monsters, bats, and a whole host of various enemies while the series staple antagonist ghost can only be destroyed once you've eaten a power pellet. Bosses are another story. While the first boss and fourth boss are easy and straightforward encounters, the second Anubis Rex, and the third a bumper cart race from hell, are less so. Anubis Rex starts out easy enough with what resembles an early Endless Runner. This quickly changes to a boss fight it is very easy at first to activate the four platforms and ram his heart, but once you get to the last stage, there's so many ways for you to get hurt, you'll find yourself getting slightly frustrated. Maybe a little cussy. That was the hardest part until I got to the carnival boss level. A race against clowns in bumper cars. Kidding. Getting first place isn't the challenge. Staying on the track is where this level will have you pulling your hair out. 
Instead of normal driving controls, where up translates to forward, the direction you push is the way you'll throw Pac-Man's cart's momentum. Push up and Pac-Man will start to head towards the top of the screen and right off the track. Go around a sharp corner too fast and you'll lose control and won't be able to fix your orientation in time. This was a maddening experience and I was so, so thankful to get this behind me. I would easily say Pac-Man World is in fact a PS1 classic that still holds up today. While the graphics aren't something you'll write home about what PS1 game is, they also don't fall into the offensively bad category other early Polygon games find themselves in. The game opens with a giant robot version of Pac-Man named Talkman. Talkman kidnaps all of Pac-Man's family and friends while they're attempting to attend Pac-Man's 20th birthday. Talkman seems to be a bit jealous of our spheroid hero, as the ghosts at his party are less than impressed with him. Once you save all your friends, you'll get to confront the Metal Menace in a boss fight that is far more traditional than the other bosses and will require you to use all of Pac-Man's abilities to beat him. This was actually a super rewarding experience. This was a great final boss. Once defeated, it's revealed that Talkman is just another ghost. And not even a cool one like Inky, but a snivelly coward that would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for Pac-Man's pill dependency. Pac-Man World is worth your time and is available for download on PSN for PS3. If you've been paying attention, the score is now two games I told my mom were bad, just to get on her nerves. And one game that actually wasn't great. Yeah, so Pac-Man World's actually pretty good too. I'm a huge fan of character platformers, uh, as well as collecting things, so Pac-Man World kind of itches that uh, scratch. Scratches that itch. Whichever it's supposed to be, I don't remember. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to do one more in this series, Medieval for PS1, and then uh, I'll do another video in a couple months or something. I don't know. See you later. Thanks, everybody. Like and subscribe. Uh, oh, and this video is going up in time for you to uh, join in on our playthrough of Crystallis for our new way we're going to do Video Game Book Club. Uh, it's where like we announced it at the beginning of the month. And we're going to play it at the end of the month. So, Crystallis for the NES. One of my favorite games. Join in on that. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Or just subscribe. I think that's the most important one, right? I don't know. Uh, see you guys soon. And, uh, hey Clay. I miss, miss, miss you.